Hi there. I'm just going to give you a quick tour of our sliding seat rowing systems, which we've designed for our boats, and uh, they can also be used in any other kind of uh, rowing boat or canoe that you want to use for sliding seat rowing. And these are designed to be an alternative to the more traditional drop-in rowing units. Uh, basically, wanted something that was lighter and more inexpensive. These are about half the weight, and weight is so important when you're moving a boat by human power. So they weigh. This unit you're looking at right here is 14 pounds and the total cost is less than $350. Typically a drop-in unit is about $650 and up and they weigh about 25 pounds with the, uh, the mounting hardware. So it's a great alternative. It uh, does take about 14 hours of build time to put together. Uh, what we supply with our kits is the componentry. It's all um, professional uh, quality components. The seat you're looking at here is a carbon fiber seat. We also have the more traditional wood seats. Uh, aluminum rails, concept to uh, foot plates and oar locks. So uh, with this oar lock here, you can see it's the gated variety. This is um, made by concept two and there are open styles of oar locks. We've actually used them in the past, but what happens is um, you don't have quite the same strength when you don't have the support across the top. Generally, the oar is pushing against the pin uh, with quite a bit of force. So you don't need a lot of strength on the other side, but what happens frequently, including uh, some, a mistake I do myself uh, on occasion, is put the oar in the wrong way, and then the stress is conveyed onto this side here. And without that cross support, it's possible for it to break, which, uh, which will happen eventually if you don't have the closed variety. So we really like these closed style Concept 2 oar locks. So these foot supports here, they're good for a few reasons. One is, Basically, you can wear any kind of shoe you want in here. You can go barefoot, but uh, normally you want to wear sneakers or something like that. So they just fit in. You can cinch it around your feet with these straps here. And the bottom, you can see, comes out. If you just have a regular foot cup, uh, you don't get that same action happening. So um, when you do move back, it slides back with your foot. So our system affixes very securely to the boat, which is of course essential when you're bouncing around in the big waves. And it's a pretty simple way we have to affix it. Um, I'll just show you with our, this the sliding seat unit just lifts out and you can see there are little slots in it which slot into the frame. We actually have this one set for two different positions uh, on this boat for uh, trim when you have a passenger and when you don't. But for every situation it's different. Very easy to adjust it. So there's slots that the boat uh, allows it to slot into the frames in the boat and there's uh, corresponding cutouts there. And then there's little notches. You can see these notches here. And uh, we've created small blocks that used to epoxy to the boat. And it just slots into those and creates a very secure and firm. Um, so I'll just pop that in, see how easy that is, boom, and it's ready. You can, if you want, you can have little bolts that bolt it in securely, but it's not really necessary. We've never ever had uh, any problems with this uh, uh, pop-in system. The riggers themselves are bolted on, so it takes a, uh, a couple of minutes just to bolt them on. I'll show you in a second. But uh, you can see it's a very simple system. We do have, every boat is different, and we have a page on our website which tells you the height of what the riggers need to be relative to the, uh, to the uh, sliding seat. It's the rowing geometry. So with each boat, you're going to need to adjust it slightly differently to get the right height. And you can use spacers to um, lift that or lock up to the appropriate height. And you can also see the blocks we have uh, epoxied to the hull, very lightweight blocks. And those blocks basically um, create a firm mount to, to bolt the riggers onto. So I'm going to show you basically how long it takes to install this. It's very quick. For the sliding seat system, it just pops in like that. You slip it in, make sure it corresponds to the grooves, push down, and boom, it's in place. That's it. And then for the riggers, it takes a little bit longer because you have to bolt them in but it's still a pretty fast process. I've got the blocks in place, pop them in, and, uh, and then I've got my little ratchet. You can use a wrench or a, uh, let's just get this the right way. Tighten those up. And then on the other side, same thing. Just
And there we go, that's it. So, yeah. So you can see that's it. It's all installed, ready to go across the ocean. It's a very quick process. So we provide two different types of seats depending on what your preferences are. What you're looking at here is our carbon fiber seat. It's very light and it uses stainless steel bearings, uh, so very little friction. And then we have the more traditional wooden seats. They're made from maple. They weigh quite a bit more, um, but they do have that nice traditional look. And they use a different uh, system to reduce the friction. Instead of using bearings, it's called a double action seat. And basically the wheels roll within this unit here. It's quite a, a neat system. It actually is just as effective as ball bearings. That's what they did traditionally on the rowing seats as far as reducing friction. One thing you never want to have in your rowing seats is using bushings. Bushings create a lot of friction, but this doesn't use bushings and this doesn't use bushings either. One nice thing about this is it is very simple, so it is pretty robust. These are robust too, but we do recommend rinsing the system out with water after you go in salt water just to reduce the corrosion that does uh, occur with time. Even with stainless and aluminum components, um, you do have corrosion if it's, uh, if it's left uh, in the salt. Now the way that we've been able to make this so light, only 14 pounds, is basically using the boat as the structure that's providing all the support and stiffness. So for example, the sliding seat frame, um, the weight is conveyed directly down to the hull where it makes contact. And the riggers, even more importantly, affixed to the gunnels in the boat. So it provides that stiffness so you don't get any flex happening. Uh, people have tried unsuccessfully to create a system, a one-piece unit, where the rigger curves off from the frame. But the problem with that is there's simply not enough support and wood flexes a lot more than metal. And that actually has given uh, wooden systems a bit of a bad name because people have heard of all the flex. But with these ones, they don't do that. We've actually tested uh, this unit, my wife and myself, over 10,000 miles. Um, with excellent performance, so it, uh, it works very well. It's got that stiffness, and this wood looks very pretty, doesn't it? It's lovely wood. Uh, looks like teak. It's actually pine, and, and pine is great because it's lightweight. It's actually coated with a layer of fiberglass, which makes it uh, gives it that extra stiffness, and it's been stained prior to fiberglassing, so it has that nice, rich, uh, dark, chocolatey look to it. You can color the wood any way you like. If you like it pale, you can keep it the uh, natural pine color, but it doesn't really cost much at all. The stain was $14 to give this this uh, lovely um, look. If somehow you do capsize and that falls out, if the sliding seat unit falls out, um, it floats. So you can just pop it back into the boat. Uh, no worries about it sinking to the bottom of the ocean. But really, in any other situation apart from a capsize, it will stay firmly in the bottom of the boat. Like I said, if you're worried about capsizing, you can just have a bolting system where you use a couple of bolts to secure it in place. So yeah, the overall construction of this is pretty straightforward, something pretty much any beginner can do. And our instructions do cater to the beginner. It just involves cutting out some pieces of wood. Uh, the wood that we use for this, this unit that you're looking at here, uh, we got from Home Depot, just pine, the, uh, the higher quality pine without the knots. It's perfect and it's very cheap. It was uh, $23 in, for all this wood, so very little. And uh, you just cut those pieces out and then you use a little bit of epoxy and screws to uh, bring it all together. And, um, and then the riggers are, are fiberglass. If you've already built a boat um, of sorts, whether it be a kayak or whatever from Stitch and Glue Design, you will already have all the skills. If you haven't, just follow the directions closely and, uh, and you shouldn't have any problems. It is a fun, fun unit to build and of course even funner to get out on the water on.